Hi everybody, how are you today? My name is Anne and welcome to Art on the Creek. You're in my home studio with me. And you know, it's a Monday as I'm filming this and I feel like sometimes Mondays are just hard. They're just inherently hard. And you wanna go down to your studio, you wanna do some painting, but what do you do? So I think today let's go over some techniques to do when you're a little bit over it, <laughs> but you really wanna get some painting done and you just don't know what to paint. Let's try something new. Are you ready? Here we go. Well, I have exciting news. I hope this audio is really nice because I'm using my new microphone today. Um, so you'll have to give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know how this audio works for you. I saved these backs of watercolor blocks because it's a really great piece of chipboard and you can just use them to tape uh, loose sheets of watercolor paper on. Today we're going to work on a sheet of 100% cotton B watercolor paper and the sheet I'm using is 6 inches by 9 inches. I've got my little llama tape here. I like using uh, washi tape with patterns on it. Um, it's just kind of fun. You can use plain tape of course. but I like the patterns because they're repetitive and there's usually some kind of a reference point there and you can see through this tape so I'm just lining up the edge of the paper with the back of the llama so that really helps uh, guide your eye. Okay now that we've got this all taped down I think we're ready to go. Let's see here I think you know when you just don't quite know what to paint I like painting art supplies because they're always within reach. They're always there for a little bit of motivation. And I think today we're just gonna set this up on a sheet of white paper. And that way we can get a good shadow cast on the, the little mat I have down here. It's kind of hard to see the shadows when you're painting. So I'm setting that up on a sheet of white paper and I'll put a photo of this up right over here. There you go. So there's quite a lot of shadows there, but the one that we're going to focus on would be, is going to be the one that's cast right in front of that paintbrush. So what I want to do to make this easy is just to have reference of a straight line. And you know what? There are rulers for that. So we're going to go ahead and use a ruler today. And we're just going to use it to give us the guide. Um, I'm going to paint this with a number eight Neptune round, just like the one we're painting. The one I'm painting is a size 14. Um, but I'm going to use a number eight to paint this. So let me get my ruler here and I'm going to lay it across the paper, first of all starting it corner to corner, but I don't want it at an exact diagonal. So I'm just slowly sliding it so that the left edge is down about a third and the right edge is up about a third. That's a very pleasing angle uh, to look at and just very lightly drawing the center line of the brush. So I'm going to start by drawing the, uh, the film, uh, the, excuse me, yes, the filament up there, um, the bristles, just really getting that shape because it's kind of it's not symmetrical it's a little bit smoother on the bottom than it is on the top and I'm using that center line that I just drew as my reference kind of a, as a point of symmetry but you'll see as this goes on um, I was a little bit off on my center line so it just kept me a little bit straighter which is great so you did, I didn't have to erase and start the whole thing pay attention to the curve of the filament um, and how it goes into the ferrule there and uh, this part is brass so about right where I put that uh, pencil dot there that's where that first ridge in the in the ferrule is going to be so it brass gold whatever shininess you want to call it I'm going to show you how we can uh, paint that without using iridescent paints because we don't want to give it a, a, a artificial sparkle we just want to kind of catch those reflections and shadows and that's why I like painting art supplies um, when I really don't know what to paint because it's always great to focus on cast shadows or highlights because honestly that's what painting is all about you just as long as you have a good drawing to start with then all you need to do is fill in those shadows and highlights and think of your medium values your darkest values and your lightest values and then you'll be good to go there's a slight curve in the handle here and I'm trying to capture that and as you'll see as I go on with my drawing I do have to redo it a little bit. That's the other thing I really like about using these backs of watercolor blocks um, to paint on because if you tape the painting to your surface I mean that's great you sure can but then you are kind of limited you can't just pick up your table and move it around but here you can really pick up the board and move it and just kind of uh, look, take your, approach your drawing from different angles. And when you're doing something on a straight line like this, or if you're trying to do something symmetrical like a vase of flowers 
or, um, you know, a, a person, uh, a face, any kind of animal face, any kind of uh, anything where you're going to need a center line. It's really beneficial to be able to pick up your paper and turn it around. Um, not that human faces or animal faces are entirely symmetrical, but I think you get the general idea. Having that center line as a guide is a great way to start your drawing. So now I'm just going to try and straighten out that curve because I think I got it a little too pronounced. So I'm going to turn it upside down and just my eyes are kind of going from where my pencil is down to where the bristles are. So I just kind of want to be able to make that continuous line without having it have such a pronounced curve. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted it less pronounced than it was before. So we'll just get this drawing finished up here. And I think that's looking pretty good. And now we can go ahead and get started painting. Now what I want to do is, um, well, I want to put my brush back because my table's at a little slight angle and everything rolls on it, it drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm using my Schmico Horridum paints here and I'm going to start with the, the bristles. I'm mixing up some uh, uh, ultramarine blue, sorry, I couldn't think of the word, ultramarine blue with a little bit of the Venetian red, the English red. And what that's going to do is create a dark, dusky, purplish gray. See how that works there? It's kind of a, a reddish brown, that uh, English red. And mixing it with the ultramarine blue will let us have a nice gray tone. So this layer that I'm putting in now, this is going to be the lightest layer of our paintbrush. Just really simple. It's just so fun to know that when you're painting something and you don't know what to paint, you don't have to focus on anything too much. This is such a simple subject. And if you're a beginning painter and you're finding this challenging, don't worry, just do your best. If you've got a few miles on your watercolor journey, you know, you'll think, oh, water, what, uh, watercolor supplies, why do I want to paint those? Well, it's just because it helps you, helps your hand regain that memory, helps you get into that mood of painting. Now I rinsed off my brush, but not too much because I just needed a little bit of yellow. I'm going in with the lemon yellow because it's a nice, bright, cool yellow and I'm just filling in the ferrule there. This is just going to be the first layer of the ferrule. So we'll just fill that in, just making sure I get very close to those edges because it's a very crisp, neat edge. We don't wanna be, we don't wanna be too loose with this. Um, it's not going to be photorealistic, but we don't wanna be um, real rough with our edges. And now I'm going in with a layer of that English red, just plain English red, to get the base tone of the paintbrush. You can see the wood on our paintbrush has an awful lot of red tone to it. So we're gonna get this painted in here first. Uh, and I like to just kind of do a, a thin line along the edge there to just kind of guide my brush and then I'll pull the rest of that pigment out and focus on the other edge. So this part here, this is the end of our first layer of paint. And so we're gonna give this a dry with the heat tool and then come back. Now that that's thoroughly dry, we can go in and add our second layer on. So let's see here, I'm getting my brush wet and just kind of blotting it off, going back into that uh, gray that we mixed. And now I'm going to put in the next layer. This will be the medium value to the, the bristles on the brush. And I'm paying attention to the way that the sheen is showing on these filaments. Let me zoom in here so that you can see what's happening. Get that centered there, here we go. You can see I'm just very, very lightly going in little wispy motions to uh, to kind of delineate where those uh, shadows and uh, highlights are in the filament itself, in the, in the brushes. And I got one off the edge there because that's what I saw when uh, in the photo. For, I don't know if you can see that from your view, but from my view, one of the, a couple of the bristles are kind of out of line there. So there's our second coat of the bristles and now we can go on and work on the second coat of the handle because I want to let that dry a little bit before I go in and do the ferrule. So let's mix some sepia in with that English red and just kind of get a mid brown. Now when you're doing wood tones it's really easy to just suggest the grain of the wood by um, placing little lines in your painting and not letting them uh, completely touch or completely finish the length of, your, of what it is you're lining. So you'll see I'm kind of stopping and starting with the lines here, just creating a random wood grain, because if you look really closely at a wood grain, it's not continuous. There are some loops. Uh, I didn't add any loops in this one in particular, but you sure could. Um, 
just kind of be real loose with it and uh, just get those spaces. Make sure you leave some of that English red showing through. And I'm focusing a little bit of darker edges on the base there. I think the ferrule has had enough time to dry. Let's add a little bit of yellow ochre to that small pool of lemon yellow that we, that we mixed. Um, it doesn't need to be a real mix of those two colors. I'm just using that to kind of uh, be a little bit more conservative with my palette. Now I really want to look at how these highlights land on this ferrule. As you can see down the middle, it's much lighter. So we're going to put these this darker level of gold toward the bottom and the top. So we're going to try and be real careful. And I'm just running the tip of my brush down the edge there, just trying to get that uh, that shadow in there of the, the reflection of this, this goldish bronze, whatever this is made of, this, this metal shininess here. And I'm turning my paper around so that I can always have a comfortable angle. And I'm always using the tip of the brush toward the edges. I'm not uh, using that toward the middle because that will help you control the paint just a little bit more. And now I definitely wanna give this a dry before our next step. Okay, we've got that ferrule all dry. And now let's go in and mix some of that gold ochre with a little bit, or yellow ochre, with a little bit of the sepia. And I'm just looking for kind of a, a nice wheat tan color. This is going to be our mid-range. So let's put that a little bit closer to the edge. And I'll zoom in here so that you can get a good view of this. You can see how I'm running the very tip of my brush along the edge. I'm trying to leave that ochre that we just put down. I'm trying to let that show while at the same point adding this in. So I'm kind of trying to get a gradiated, a gradient, I guess is the right word, a gradient of color. Now it's not done, it's not, it's not perfect yet, but I'm putting a very, very fine line of that mid-range down the middle. Just trying to catch that uh, variance in the highlights there. And I picked up the brush down there where the, the knurls and the ferrule are. I picked up the brush a little bit. You don't want that to be a completely straight line. I'm trying to kind of hop over those uh, the ridge lines that I've made there. So let's go to our next step. And that's going to be to go right into that ivory black. You know, I don't always use ivory black, but if they're going to include it in the palette, I kind of like to use it because you know it's, it's paint. Why not use it? Um, mixing your blacks is always great, but in this particular set, it's hard to get a really good dark black. I guess you could mix the sepia with the, um, the ultramarine, but we, we didn't this time. So let's go ahead and just barely fill in on these darkest areas. I'm always leaving just a little bit of space. I'm not doing anything solid using that very tip of my brush and just trying to get the darkest uh, filaments of that, uh, the fibers in there. So that is done with ivory black. And now let's add some of that ivory black to that uh, pile of sepia that we've got there. Now this was the darkest brown that we mixed so far. Let's mix some um, English red back into it and darken that up. We're trying to get a real good level of a dark chocolate brown. This will be the darkest shadow in uh, the handle of our paintbrush. So once again, leaving what we've already done kind of exposed and we're just sketching these lines in every so often, just kind of trying to leave the light and the medium showing. This will help us create some depth and dimension in our shadows. And I think that's pretty good. Now we'll go into this same dark brown that we mixed and we'll tap it into that yellow ochre because now we can get these darkest shadows on our ferrule. So we're just gonna line that along the bottom. I'm sorry, part of that is out of frame for you but we're lining that along both edges. So this is the darkest value of our reflection and shadows. And we're just very lightly putting it in the grooves there and along the edge, going along into the center. And then let's see our final step here. I should say second to final because we're going to go in at the end with the gel pen and really bump up these highlights. I've gone over the whole ferrule with a very fine wash of uh, yellow ochre because I really didn't think it had enough depth to it. I, it just wasn't rich enough. And now I'm going in with that darkest brown and just, I did dry that thoroughly, and now I'm going in with the darkest brown and pumping up those shadows. So once again, let's get this dry with the heat tool and then we'll move on to our next step. Now that that's dry, we can go in and add that wonderful shadow just underneath the brush. So what I like to do is I'm mixing just a little bit more of our ultramarine in that same initial gray that we mixed for the bristles of the brush. And we're just gonna hug that right along the bottom here. 
and kind of keep it close to the, the brush as close as we can. Um, we're just pressing down lightly on our on our brush and if uh, if you look closely when I'm looking at this live I'm not sure it shows up in the picture but if you look closely some of the light from the the brush itself is bouncing off of the white and showing color in the shadow if you want to go ahead and go through all that detail you sure can um, I'm just doing a, a gray shadow here just to represent the the entire shadow line so right about this point in the brush here I noticed that it's a little bit off of the paper now you can also do that on the filament in front I didn't I chose to leave it uh, touching but I wanted to add some interest toward the back end because as your eye travels across this I thought it would be nice to have just a little bit of a different shadow at the end and to help show that that brush is definitely a curved shape so now what I'm going to do is go in with just a little bit darker it's the same pigment this is just another layer of it that same ultramarine that we mixed with that ultramarine and Venetian red. And I'm just running this very tightly along the edge of the brush. When you look at a shadow, you'll notice that the darkest point of the shadow is where the object touches the floor. So that's what I wanted to, um, to accentuate there. And then I'll just fill it in here in the middle uh, toward the end. There are actually several shadows here and you can choose to paint whichever ones you see. But what I wanted to do was to kind of keep this simple. And now I've got my brush wet and my water's kind of kind of dirty by this point. It's not entirely clean, but that will uh, be used to my advantage because I'm going to capture some of that spill of the shadow that comes forward. So I'm just kind of smudging that line there uh, where I painted the shadow. I'm not getting this wet brush into the paintbrush itself, just along the shadow line. And I'm just kind of agitating the pigment, just making a wider line there. And that will help to establish the other lights that are coming down and uh, and shading that so there our shadows are all done now let's go ahead and uh, give this a thorough drying and then we'll go in and with our white gel pen and get those high highlights in that brass ferrule so now that's thoroughly dry and you do want to make sure it's completely dry before you go in with a gel pen and I know I keep calling this a brass ferrule I don't think it's actually brass I it's probably just some kind of tin but metal it's some sort of metal <laughs> so looking at it very closely you'll see that the highest highlight is right there about where um, our eyes are looking at it and that highlight skips across the ridge just under the filament bristles it uh, bounces in the little ridges there where it's got the dent in the ferrules and then it also kind of bounces on the very edge and I also see that there's a thinner line of a very light highlight just below that main bright highlight. So I went ahead and put that in as well. And now I think, what the heck, I'll go ahead and sign this with a paintbrush. Since I've painted a paintbrush with a paintbrush, <laughs> we'll go ahead and sign this one in paint. And that is all there is to it today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed um, refreshing your, uh, your love for watercolor and just focusing on some shadows and light, different highlights, textures. This is just such a fun way to do it. Let's go ahead and take the tape off and see what we've got. Well, there you go. Is it live or is it Memorex? <laughs> you can tell which one is the real one. But you know what? I'm not a realistic painter. That's never what I'm going for. But I really like the way it came out, and I hope you guys really like yours too. And maybe you've gotten yourself out of the Monday rut. <laughs> when you don't know what to paint, and you just feel like everything just seems like too much of an ordeal, just go for something simple. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this kind of content and uh, you'd like to see more of it, please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video with your friends. Thanks for joining me again. We'll see you next time on Art on the Creek. Bye now.